depression and praise. We all get depressed from time to time, and there's a lot of discussion about causes for depression. We're not going to get into all of that today. I want to give a general definition of depression. Uh, Severe despondency and dejection, accompanied by feelings of hopelessness and inadequacy. Uh, It can be a condition of mental disturbance, typically a lack of energy and difficulty in maintaining a concentration on anything or even an interest in life. And whether the cause is something which is uh, physical within us or circumstantial, uh, it could be demonic or it could be uh, habitual, environmental. Again, the causes are beyond our discussion today. Uh, If you are in depression, do ask the Lord for wisdom as to the cause. He will give you an understanding of what's going on. But I want to focus on what the Bible says about how we are to handle depression. And that is that we are to look to the Lord for our hope. Now, if you are in treatment, if you're on medication or any kind of a program for depression, I am not encouraging you to leave that program. Stay with what you're in and again, ask the Lord for wisdom, but ask him to show you how to, as the Bible says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. God is able to heal all conditions, all situations, and The best way that I know from the biblical perspective to handle depression is to pour on the praise. Get our eyes off of self, get our eyes off of circumstances, get our eyes off of others, and get our eyes on the Lord. Isaiah tells us in chapter 26 and verse 3, referring to the Lord, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. As our minds are stayed on the Lord, focused on him, we are going to be able to have peace and strength and healing. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy from Isaiah chapter 61, and he said so. On one occasion in the synagogue, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to give them, that means us, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When you and I turn to Jesus Christ, we're going to receive beauty for the ashes of our lives oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. The Apostle Paul talks about how to handle the warfare that goes on in our minds, and much of depression is in our minds. That's the great battleground, the battleground that Satan wants to take from us. And our minds really should be the province of the Lord. Once we become born again, we have a spiritual nature. We have the mind of Christ, Paul says, and we want for that mind to be dedicated to and concentrating upon the Lord. But the devil wants our minds, and he puts, as Paul calls it, fiery darts into our thinking. Now, the devil cannot touch us and harm us, but he can give us thoughts. He did that with Jesus as he tempted him in the wilderness, and Jesus countered with the word of God. I think that's very important for us because when the devil begins to move in on your mind or old nature begins to bring up old thoughts and we have all sorts of remembrances of tough times in the past, it is very important for us to quote the Word of God because the Word of God is our sword. It is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and it divides between the soul and the spirit. The fleshly side and the spiritual side of our lives. As we look in Matthew chapter 4, we see the tempter, who is Satan, saying to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Jesus counters with the word of God. And he says, it is written, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The devil then counters again. And now he goes to the word, the Bible, and he says, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And so he's trying to tempt the Lord to cast himself down from the pinnacle of the temple. Jesus again uses the word, and he says, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. The devil, a third time then, takes him up and shows him all of the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he says, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus says, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. The word is very important. That's our sword. Paul talks about putting on our armor against the enemy the enemy of the devil, the enemy of the world apart from Christ, the enemy of the old nature. And he says, put on that helmet of salvation to protect your mind. Put on that breastplate of righteousness to protect your heart. Put on the belt of truth, God's word. Put on the sandals of the gospel or the good news of peace. Take up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts. Take that sword of the spirit that we just talked about, the word of God. That's your armor. And incidentally, all pieces of the armor are the Lord Jesus Christ. You're putting on Jesus and you're concentrating on him. Now, talking about the mind, Paul writes to the Corinthian church and he says regarding the warfare that we have in our minds, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. God has given us powerful weapons, not carnal weapons, not guns and knives, not sharp tongues, anger, but he has given us spiritual weapons, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When a negative thought comes in, when the enemy starts to attack, say, in the name of Jesus, because in the name of Jesus, we have great victory and great power because Jesus defeated Satan at the cross, the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, we already talked about the word, we use the Bible as the sword. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I say it is written. And then quote some scripture appropriately, such as resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we have the name of Jesus and we have the word. We talked about faith, the shield of faith. And we know that we have that protection. Our faith in the Lord Jesus is going to protect us from the negative thoughts that will just plague our minds. And then there are family and friends who can pray for us. The Bible says that one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. Get a prayer partner to pray with you and vanquish those negative thoughts that bring us down so many times. We focus in on the situations and we get hopeless. Somebody else can come on in and say, let's go to the Lord and let's pray. So we have the name of Jesus and we have the shield of faith and we have the word of God and we have valuable friends and we have prayer. Oh, the value of prayer as we go to the Lord and we say, Lord, cleanse my mind, heal my mind and give me your peace. And let's go on with the scripture now. The weapons of our warfare are not kind of carnal, but they're mighty in God. And they're going to do several things for us. These weapons are going to pull down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So, these weapons, the name of Jesus, the Bible, prayer, friends praying with you and counseling, and so the shield of faith, the word of God, all of that is going to cast down strongholds. Strongholds the devil has put into our minds. Strongholds that family, without intending to perhaps have put in our minds. You're ugly, you're no good, you're worthless, you're lazy. We can pull down those strongholds. We have 
new minds in Christ. Paul says to the Corinthian church that we, have, we are a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. And so we pull down those strongholds. We cast down the arguments. Now the devil was arguing with Jesus there in the wilderness. We saw that. And those arguments can be cast down. Jesus cast down the arguments and he countered with the word of God. And you and I need to cast down those arguments or those arguments are going to stay in our minds and begin to grow. So we pull down the strongholds, we cast down the arguments, we cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that tries to bring down the Lord in our minds that makes us hopeless. God can't meet this situation. God doesn't care about us. Every thought must be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Check every thought. Is it of God? Does it obey Jesus Christ and glorify him? Or is it of self, of the world, of the devil? Does it really glorify Jesus Christ? I'm hopeless. I need money. I have no job. Everything is against me. Those are negative thoughts. We need to now begin to counter them and replace them with positive thoughts. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Paul writes to the Philippian church. I'm sick and I'm not getting well and there's no hope for me. All have given up on me and I'm in this body of pain and sickness and I'm in despair. Let's counter that with the word of God. Isaiah says, referring to Jesus, and Matthew says the same thing, that Jesus bore our sicknesses, carried our infirmities, and by his stripes we are healed. So we watch our thinking, and we replace the negative with the positive from the Word of God. And then we finally humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, as Peter said, that he might exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Not to be simplistic, but my late brother and late mother used to have the little story about the red box. Take the imaginary red box, put all your problems in it, the people who are troubling you, the situations that are troubling you. Put the box on the altar. Put the lid on the box. If the hand of that person starts to come out, flops out, just put it back in there, put the lid on there and say, Jesus, I am leaving the red box and these problems with you. I am trusting you. I am casting all my cares upon you because you care for me. I think it's important that we get into praise scriptures, really learn how to praise the Lord. The Bible is filled with them. I think one of the easiest places to go would be Psalms. Oh, the praise songs, especially of David. Uh, and David, incidentally, was somebody who was prone to depression. He gives us a very clear picture of how he was able to overcome depression. And it's in Psalm 42 and also in Psalm 43. And it's the last verse of each of those two chapters. I'm going to find that. It's a great resource for us uh, in time of trouble. Why am I so sad? Why am I so upset? I should put my hope in God and keep praising Him, my Savior and my God. What's my problem? Why am I in despair? Why am I hopeless? I'll put my hope in God and I will keep praising Him for He's my Savior and He's my God. Let me give you some other samples of the kinds of things you'll find in the Bible that will build you up. When you're in that state of depression and you're focusing on yourself and you're focusing on circumstances and you're in despair, say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm in this state. I'm not worshiping you. And now, Lord, help me to focus in on you and lift up your precious name. Here are some wonderful praise scriptures just to give you a taste of what could build you up. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the person who takes refuge in him. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with kindness, I have drawn you, God says. 
Not that I speak in regard to need, Paul writes, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. You, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. You get the idea of the uplifting value of praise. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you, and my soul, which you have redeemed. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain or restore him on his sick bed. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. The Lord God is my strength. He makes me like a deer that does not stumble so I can walk on the steep mountains. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. How about this for a promise from Jesus? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So those are wonderful praise promises. And if you have a problem in the area of physical healing or mental healing or healing of finances and you want to focus on that, there are many, many scriptures on healing. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, Jesus says, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. And it goes on and on and on. The Word. Go to the Word to be built up in faith and to turn that mourning into joy and that heaviness into praise. Get some praise tapes, get some praise music, sing your own songs, pray in the Spirit or tongues, sing in the Spirit or tongues, pray with understanding in your native language and sing in that language. And gather around you people who are people of faith, who can lift you up, be in church as often as you can, participate in worship, and really learn how to exchange the depression for the praise. God wants us to have joy. The Apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Ask God for wisdom on how you can bring yourself and by That I mean he will bring you to that point of great joy. And let's see that depression lift. And let's go out and help others to receive that same freedom and that same peace. God loves you and he wants you free. I'd like to pray for you right now. If you are in depression or you have concern about any need, let's bow our hearts, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you that all provision has been made by and through Jesus Christ. Jesus, you have provided for our emotional well-being, our physical well-being, our well-being spiritually, financially, and even in our relationships. Teach us to count our blessings. Count the breath that we breathe as a gift. The fact that we can move our limbs and move our eyes and help us to play the game of gratitude and say, thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings which I have. Help us, Lord, to be in your word and to be strengthened by your word and help us to have praise on our lips, thanksgiving constantly flowing from our hearts. And help us, Lord, to share that joy with others and help to release them from the prison of their depression. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May God richly bless you and give you his joy permanently through Jesus Christ.